I'm Jamie Shovelin, I'm an artist, I'm normally based in London and I studied there uh, painting at the Royal College, graduated in a long time ago, 2001 and I've been yeah, making work ever since. I think broadly speaking I work on projects that kind of, I guess, interrogate the nature of information, especially how that information is delivered to an audience, to a public. I'm really interested in the kind of procedures that affect the kind of shape of that information as it travels between somebody telling a story and somebody receiving a story and the ways in which kind of unseen hands or manipulation kind of places different types of emphasis on that information that may or may not be accurate or sincere or affect its sincerity or its accuracy. I'm not that interested in whether something's kind of true or false or real or, or inauthentic. I'm kind of more interested in the whole kind of I guess world building aspect of it, the exper experiential aspect, the idea that if you go into a, a room full of drawings by a young girl, whether they're real, whether they're by a young girl, is less significant for me than whether there is a convincing whole. And that whole is then experienced as a spectator and then there's a secondary experience that runs parallel to that, which is this idea that once you have found out that it isn't what it was initially presented as, you might retrace your steps, you might look at these things again with a different set of eyes and it might be a more kind of interrogative glance. I like making things, you know, I like physically creating. I'm very kind of intimate and embedded in the process of making and that's really important for me. That I think relates to, you know, a kind of broader relationship to material culture. Each project has its own internal logic and that internal logic then leads to its realisation in a particular physical form. One of the things I come back to regularly is drawing, uh, which kind of, as much as anything, seems like a way of working out ideas. It's giving yourself a bit of space, you know, giving time, space to contemplate. And I kind of more and more really enjoy having that space to actually you know, think about what I'm doing. I always work on several projects at the same time and there's kind of a a balance in that type of productivity for me, you know, working on one thing that takes me you know, to a different place to, to make a film, and then working on something that I can do at home, do in the studio, as a consequence of working more kind of with film material. I just hadn't had the chance to actually you know, sit down and kind of build some momentum towards making a physical body of work. So it was really appealing to have just over three weeks in a place where I'd have access to you know, a print studio, a laser cutter, studio itself and that would be the focus that would be why I'm there you know I'd be there doing that and I'd be able to do that without any distraction so that was really really appealing. The Widows and Orphans project is um, is kind of a, an ongoing project it's probably been, probably been I think three to four years now in production its central aspect will be at some point in the future a, a multi-screen video installation but there was always alongside that kind of idea this space for more material that would kind of, I guess in a simple way, in my mind anyway, they would be like an analog equivalent of this digital world that the video would reside within. Um, I liked making quite traditional drawings that were derived from copies of copies of copies of Greek statuary. These Greek statues that were destroyed when the Romans pillaged the Greeks in, you know, 150, 146 BC, and then made near identical copies in the same design, same style, with minor variations. I started considering that work in relation to the larger aspect of the video installation, which is a kind of 12-person take on the history of the world. So these images, which I came across initially in a, a Fidon book called Portraits of the Greeks from, I think, the 1960s, I quite like that idea that I'd be accessing this material that at one point in time, 2,000 years ago, was a verifiable public source of information. And through the generations, it has now come to me as this kind of like third, fourth hand copy printed in a book that I found in a library that is already 50 years old. And each of these removes from what the original thing was. And the idea was always to kind of, I guess to create an alternative historical document that would acknowledge subjectivity, humanness, mistakes, breaks, absence, and I guess the things that standard historical texts tend to, you know, paper over. Uh, the residence has been really been great. I mean, I, I kind of came here with an idea of what I wanted to do, which was to take 
um, a series of existing works or partially existing works and uh, complete or amend or adapt them. And part of that process involved um, kind of making finite things and making, you know, framed artworks uh, and kind of inverting that endness that you get from a framed object or a framed drawing in this case and doing that by literally interrupting the container that it's placed within. I kind of originally anticipated using the print studio and using mixture of screen printing and laser cutting. And it turns out that I kind of almost entirely used the laser cutter. What I kind of liked about that was this relationship that is consistent for all these works uh, between whatever's handmade and what is then machine processed. So this idea of these drawings being manual, slightly laborious undertakings, and then subjecting them to something which is to a large degree automated. And that kind of contrast between those two forms of production, which I think relates to that idea of um, where the source text that provides the kind of central concept that flows for each of these works comes from of you know, material that's taken from a book in origin being transferred into this kind of digital realm through uh, the use of synthetic voice. I think if you're applying for residency um, because of its duration, I would know what you're going to do almost immediately. Not, you know, not know exactly what you can do descriptively or prescriptively, but know where you want to focus. And I, you know, make it tight. I think one of the things I, and, and I kind of knew it would, was pointless to do, was uh, try to do three or four different things when I think I'd have been more effective if I'd have just done the one. So yeah, be concise. The abuses in the church must be corrected, but that the Roman church itself, even if perfect by its own ideal.